Dr. F. Perry Wilson is an associate professor of medicine at Yale University. Good to have you here, doctor. And as we try to understand this survey, is this potentially good news in the sense that it means the fatality rate could be a lot less than previously thought? Thanks, Anna. Um, I wish I could uh, color this as good news. I actually think this is quite bad news. The um, overall prevalence of antibody positivity was about 5%. And yes, that does suggest that there are a lot of cases we're missing with testing. But one thing to put that in context is that all the studies estimate that about 50 to 60% of the population of the United States needs to become immune to this virus, either through a vaccine or through becoming infected, before the epidemic really starts to slow down. That's this herd immunity number. Now, if we're at 5% right now, we're a 12th of the way there. In the absence of a vaccine, that puts us in the first inning, and there have been 125,000 deaths so far in the U.S., so um, it's not too hard to do the math. Uh, this is concerning data. We've heard doctors this week describe the current coronavirus situation as a four alarm fire, a catastrophe on the verge of being apocalyptic, public health train wreck in slow motion. How would you describe the situation? I think it is a disaster. We had, we, we all got together and we went into lockdown and quarantine. We, our goal there was to just buy time. And that wasn't just to stock up on PPE and to learn new protocols in the hospitals. We've done that to some extent. It was to ramp up testing, contact tracing, and isolation practices, which were largely abandoned by the federal government during that period. And so it is no wonder that as we open up, we find ourselves unprepared. This is an incredibly infectious disease. We knew that from the beginning. And so it is to be expected that without really robust measures, we're going to go right back to where we started. And it feels like the past few months where we've all been stuck inside, in some sense, was wasted. And we've surpassed, in fact, the highest number of cases in one day that we had um, back in April this week. It's you know, we're, our curve is going straight up. We're no longer flat even. A at least 32 states are seeing a rise in cases compared to last week. 13 of those states are reporting a 50 percent increase or greater. Cases are rising rapidly in places like Arizona, Texas, Florida, California. If you're in one of those states, what should these leaders do to stop the increase at this point? Is there something they can do today to at least flatten, if not diminish, the direction of the curve? I think one of the real challenges here is realizing that because of the length of time it takes between when you're infected and when people show symptoms and come up with testing, there's often a delay before you start to see these upswings. This has been going on for a while, probably, honestly, since Memorial Day. Um, we in a lot of these states are in a situation where it's going to be very hard to dial that back. I think a lot of these leaders are going to seriously need to consider going back into lockdown, at least for a period of time, um, in order to get their ducks in a row, in order to get the public health apparatus there to do that robust testing that's needed, which is still inadequate. In Florida, the mayor of Miami-Dade County closed the beaches ahead of Fourth of July. We know in Texas, the governor closed bars, reduced restaurant capacity after initially reopening. Several cities have been passing mandatory mask requirements, even if it's not mandated at the state level. But is it enough just to have a, a scattershot approach like this, or does there need to be a more cohesive national plan to combat the growing number of cases? I think this is one of the major problems in the in the response to coronavirus. The coronavirus has no respect for state borders. It doesn't respond to the governor. This is a national crisis. Honestly, it's an international crisis. And we continue to hear um, from the likes of, of uh, Vice President Pence even um, at the press briefing yesterday that, you know, they're deferring to the governors and local authorities for things like this. We need a national response because this affects us all. It goes right across the state borders. Um, and that's been highly ineffectual. Dr. Perry Wilson, good to have you. Thank you. Thank you. Texas is rolling back its reopening as cases there surge and the number of hospitalizations set new records. We'll have a live report from that state next. Stay with us. You're live in the CNN newsroom.